All right. Jim Ursay Guitar Collection. Oh, Jesus. My buddy Jim Ursay. Hey, Billy B. Bender. I was reading the Guitar Aficionado, Aficionado magazine this month, and there was an art, article about Warren Hayes playing Jerry Garcia's guitar, Tiger, at Red Rocks a few months back. This was the last guitar Jerry ever played live before his untimely death. Anyways, long story short, the article went on to disclose Jim Irsay was the actual owner of the guitar. Well, that's what happens with most most of those instruments. They are owned by rich people who are not musicians. I'm not saying they're not lovers of music, but um, that's where it all ends up. And then actual musicians, they buy their own gear, and then they make that gear legendary. You know what I mean? I was, I was, you know, I did that shit. I bought a 71 Ludwig Green Sparkle John Bonham fucking kit. Like, so then what? Now I'm going to play like him? That was an expensive lesson to learn. <laughs> you know, but I know there's some other kid, you know, going down to fucking uh, pro drum shop out here in L.A. And he's going to buy a fucking kit that's a particular color and everything and he's going to tune them up or she's going to do it and they're going to have a sound and they're going to put it together and then everybody's going to want that kit so it doesn't surprise me i mean he owns a team in the nfl this guy's a fucking billionaire right um he said he paid eight hundred fifty thousand dollars for it at auction and you know what's great about jim ursay money um is if he's a fucking billionaire all right. Even if even if you fucking if you had if you had a hundred million bucks, spending eight hundred fifty thousand dollars is spending less than one percent of your fucking money. Um, but if you're a billionaire, then what is the, the, the fucking decimal point moves over one more? Is that it? Is it point zero one percent less than that? I don't know. He said he paid eight hundred fifty thousand for an auction. Not to mention he also owns Bob Dylan Stratocaster. From the Newport Festival, George Harrison's Gibson SG. Jesus, what a fucking collection. And even Prince's Yellow Cloud guitar. Although I appreciate someone preserving musical history like he has, as a longtime guitarist and Patriots fan, I say fuck him for not allowing these guitars to be in the hands of musicians. What are your thoughts? Um, I separate Jim Mercy, the football owner, when you start talking about his guitar collection, then he's just a regular person to me. You know what I mean? So he's just a rich guy that he's a music lover. And I don't think they should necessarily be in the hands of musicians because um, I think that you should be influenced by great artists, not go out and, and try to do what they already did. I think the fact that you as a musician will go out, you know, like I, if I was a musician my goal would be like, I would want my guitar to be famous too. Like how Stevie Ray Vaughan's, you know, or John Bonham's Vista Light kit became famous. Like none of the, none of those things were famous. No one knew what they looked like until they got into the hands of those unbelievable artists. So um, I think that the reason, the fact that they go for all that money and they end up in rich people's hands is just a testament to the greatness of the musician and how music affects people. Even a guy who's a fucking NFL owner, the fact that he's into the dead, he's into George Harrison, he's into Prince, he's into Bob Dylan. I mean, I, you can't fuck with any of those influences. The guy's got good taste in music, you know? Um, but there's no magic in those guitars though. I mean, I could literally have Bonham's kit and I'm going to sound like a comedian playing drums and you guys are all going to be like, hey, can you fucking knock it off? You know what I mean? So I don't think that they, I think that they, um, they're just like pieces of history now, I think. Like uh, if you have like fucking Napoleon's sword, I don't think that, oh, well, that should be in some other fucking dictator's hands chopping somebody's fucking head off. I mean, I don't think so. I just think that, uh, if you're into that type of shit, which I totally am, I'm completely into memorabilia, but I refuse to buy any because so much of it is fake. And also, um, I just have enough shit in my fucking house. I don't need any more shit in my house. And uh, I also, I, I, I don't want my fucking house to look like a fucking, a fucking hard rock cafe. You know what I mean? Where I got fucking Jim Morrison's fucking MeUndies on the wall. <laughs> 
framed, you know? And there'll probably some guy, it's probably, it's a better chance of being Jim Ursay's fucking me undies than Jim Morrison. So, um, yeah, I don't begrudge him. And um, I think it's, I think that's fucking awesome that he has it because, uh, well, I guess then that's why musicians support maybe. I don't know. There is something cool to touch the thing. Like if you could ever like just hold that, that Jimmy Page double necked SG that he played Stairway to Heaven on, if you could just fucking hold that thing and just feel like, like I, I think you just start whispering when you had it, like, oh my God, this is a, he looked at John Bonham and would give him the nod when he was coming out of the solo, you know? Okay, that was probably creepy. Listen to me fucking whisper. I, I, I would be like that around that shit. But um, hey, man, if you got the fucking money, you know? They can have it. So they, there you go, man. Go make your guitar fucking legendary. And then see how much Jim Irsay will pay for yours. You know, but then again, you'd have to be dead. Well, Bob Dylan's not dead when you give it up for auction. Starting tomorrow night. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. I don't give a fuck about the first 162. I show up in October. Oh, that's what I do. And I root, root, root for the fucking Red Sox. If they don't win, it's a shame. But they already beat the curse of the babe. And everyone was on roids, right? That's why I left. I left in 2010. I left in 2010 with baseball. I was just like, look, either fucking get it out of the game or make it legal, but stop getting me excited about shit that you can say five years later it doesn't count. I still love the game. Who doesn't love somebody? I, you know, I, I love a pitcher's duel. That's how much I love baseball. I like to keep score. I like all of that. But um, I don't, from 98 to 2010, there was just too many fucking people that I was just like, holy shit. Holy shit, dude. I'm watching a guy who is fucking with, you know, the greats of the goddamn game. And then, uh, and then like, you know, five years later, oh, actually, uh, he was part centaur. It uh, doesn't, doesn't really count. And, uh, should he or should he not be in the hall? Right? And then you had, like, you know, people like Alex Rodriguez come along and they fucking, like, I mean, they got most talented fucking dude, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's on steroids. And the big fall of him or whatever. And then I, I love the, the guy comes back. He hits his 600th home run. And I, I'm, in, I'm in New York City. And there's video of this because I, I know I posted it somewhere. On the cover, they were giving shit for the Patriots. For one of the trumped up fucking horseshit, ticky tack charges of us cheating. And then on the back, they, they were giving Alex Rodriguez love for hitting his 600th home run. <laughs> It's only cheating if the other team does it. Um, so anyways, uh, very excited for playoff baseball. You know, that's my favorite time. Everybody's all bundled up. They get the extra microphones at the ballpark. Joe Buck's calling the game. What's not to like? The games fucking matter. Of the four major sports, there is not a fucking sport out there where it matters worse if you lose a game. When there's 160 fucking two of them, it just, it doesn't fucking matter. You know, and, and uh, the, the fucking slave labor that these people have to go out and play 162 fucking games is just like, I mean, baseball's got it. How the fuck does football make more money than baseball? You would just think collectively. Like during the height of the steroids era, which is, is a great argument for steroids. I mean, the ballparks were packed. You know what I mean? I think, you know, all of these people around the world who are just confused at why America could give a fuck about soccer, right? Or feetball is what it should be called. You know what I mean? I love whoever the fuck came up with that on Twitter. Because why do you call it football and you can pick it up? Well, why do you call, why do you call it football? You can use both feet, right? Isn't it feetball? You want to be a cunt? We can be a cunt too, right? Here's the deal. If they would just fucking roid these fucking players up, okay, where they're at, at center ice, but it's a field, and they could just tee one up and fucking blast it into the back like fucking Al McGinnis back at the day at the blue line. You know what I mean? 
Fucking Paul Coffey skating down towards his old goaltender, winding it up, going fucking top shelf. If they had some people fucking doing that. Somebody said that to me one time. Uh, I was in Fenway, and then we were talking about how we're just not into soccer. And the dude just goes, well, we have soccer here. It's, 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 it's called hockey, and it's a lot faster. And whenever I watch soccer, like I see that. I Look, I understand there's a beauty to that game and everything, but uh, you know what the reality is, is I just don't have time to watch another sport. I mean, I've gotten a little behind with the F1, you know. Um, I haven't seen the Malaysia race yet, but I, I, I was able to go back and uh, I watched the Singapore race, which was cool as shit because it was at night. Um. And then I watched the beginning. Was it the beginning of the Malaysian race where that fucking Hulkenberg guy just got fucking hit and the whole side of his car got taken out? What a fucking buzzkill that is. Um, but anyways, I know Nico's. No, he came in third place. That's right. And then Force India. Didn't they win the first two? I got to look it up. What was it? The Red Bull team. I don't fucking know. But um, anyways, I think Japan's next. And then did they go to Austin? Austin, Texas think that's what it is yeah which that's i obviously don't the, i should probably go to that one next year book myself out there in austin go out there check it out hey what you man this ain't like stock car racing hey what's going on it's bill burn it's time for the thursday afternoon just before friday monday morning podcast and ah, i'm just checking in on you just checking in on you, checking in on you. I need your help, man. I need your help. Guess what I have? I have the iPhone 7. Ooh! ooh. Oh, what are you going to Comic Con, Bill? What do you what do you got? What do you got all the, the, the latest technology for? I'll tell you why. I f- was fucking making some goddamn f- fucking potatoes. And I had my fucking iPhone to the side on the sink and water splashed around and it got in it. Got in it somehow, and then the thing just went, oh, and just fucking shut off. Right as I realized it, I thought I, you know, the fucking countertops, well, I didn't see it. I fucking set it down this little, I was in a rush, fucking, you know, peeling potatoes like a fucking goddamn mick. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. And I looked over and washed a couple dishes, and I, I always lose sight of where my phone is. It was near the sink, and there was water from, you know, there was pots and pans and stuff sprays, and it was just sitting in a fucking puddle. And uh, and my wife was just like, shut it off, throw it in a bag of rice. You know, it was like mash without a happy ending. And the thing just fucking died. And uh, I didn't save any of my contacts. You know, I, I didn't have I, have I had zero phone numbers. I lost all my photos and all my video for my European run. My trip down to Amalfi, I lost fucking everything, all kinds of shit. I lost a picture of my fucking Ludwig drum kit. When I played at the Roxy, you know, I just, the shit that I lost, I, I didn't even want to fucking think about it. And, uh, but you know what? Most of it I forget anyways. It's like all that clutter that you got in your fucking house, all the magazines you're saving, you're never going to go back to them. You know, if somebody actually snuck in your house and took half of it, you know, other than the space, you wouldn't miss it, right? So this is my thing. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, well, but why don't you just put it on the iCloud? And it's because, well, you know, uh, I don't even know if I said this because I had to start this fucking thing twice. Yeah, I I don't want somebody to fucking. I I just, I just don't want somebody else having my shit. I mean, is is that so? What can you fucking imagine? Like back in the day, if somebody older people, you remember when you had your little black book, all your fucking phone numbers, remember all your family photos, your slides. Can you imagine if some corporation, yeah, we'll hold on to these. You be the fuck you will, you weirdo. What are you doing with them? So. And the reason why I never backed them up to my computer is because I could never figure out how to do it. I mean, I, I Googled it and all that shit. It says go, go in the iPhone section of your iTunes. Click on the info fucking tab. I can't, I have no fucking idea where it is. I've looked up on all these things. There's no video of it. There's all this shit. Hey, how to go iPhone to iPhone, iPhone to add, iPad, ask the fucking mouth. They got everything except how for me to put my fucking phone numbers in the contact book, which I could do a few phones ago. Now, I know you guys think I'm a fucking moron. I know you think I can't read. I know you think I suck at reading out loud. And you know what? You're right. But I'm not at the age where I used to know how to do shit. Now I don't. Okay, give me a little bit of credit. I'm only 48 years old. I'm not 78, 88. That's when that shit creeps on. 
Okay, I knew how to do this shit. It used to be fucking easy. You used to do it automatically. You just fucking plug it in, and then all your fucking numbers were on your computer. Now, now they've they've made it really fucking difficult. And the amount of times I just thought, just give in, give in, give in, man. Put it on the cloud. Let the ghost of Steve Jobs handle it. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. There's a reason why God took him so early. He needed to fucking slap him around first. Okay, he needed to yank that fucking turtleneck right up over his head. Jesus Christ, Bill, the man is dead. He had children. I don't give a fuck. I can't figure this out, okay? So people have to get hurt, okay? Oh, I felt good. So if anybody knows where the fucking goddamn fucking info tab is in the iPhone section of fucking iTunes, it can explain to me how, how the fuck I can save my own phone numbers. I actually went into Barnes & Noble's. It's a bookstore, everybody, for anybody under the age of 40. They used to sell books. They still do. And they're, oh, my God, what a collection of fucking human beings that are in that place. The last of the last. The last of the book readers, right? Like the last of the blacksmiths. The last of the people with the crank start fucking cars. You know? Last of the Mohicans. Right? The last person to take a shit in CBGBs before they turn it into a John fucking Varvatos. All right? I gave you so many examples, I can't even remember what the fuck I was talking about. But all I know is uh, I, I need your help, okay? <laughs> I, oh, I don't know. I went to the fucking Barnes and Nobles. Or is it Barnes and Noble? I don't even know. And once I see Barnes, I'm like, yeah, that's it. What is it, Benny Barnes? The guy's a fucking drug dealer. He's either in jail or he's hiding. Uh, oh, that's, that's Nikki Barnes. I don't fucking know. Benny Barnes. Who the fuck was Benny Barnes? Was that one of the cats on Top Cat? It wasn't John Leguizano, it was Benny Blanco. Benny Blanco from the Bronx. Who the fuck was Benny Barnes? He was somebody. That's too cool a name to not have been somebody. That is somebody. Anyways, we'll get back to that one. I'll look that one up later if I, if I still know how to fucking turn my computer on. God knows on the new operating system. Maybe that changed. Um, so I walk into this fucking bookstore. And I walk up to this, this woman, you know, who's just like one of these people who, who probably, she's, she's the one who should be running the country. All right. But she's, you know, because, you know, but she's not going to do it because she's a good person, because she probably doesn't like telling people what to do. She probably doesn't feel qualified. All right. Unlike those two complete fucking psychos that you I mean, can you imagine if the two of them had a kid? If Trump fucked Hillary, what would come out of that fucking pre-presidential snatch? I can't even fucking imagine the lack of feeling. Well, I, it would have black eyes. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it had and you'd look over and it would be sitting on the swing just staring at you and you would be fucking horrified um so much of this has to do with the fact that i can't upload my contacts all right so I don't take it too too personally um but um anyways by the way uh you know what I, I i barely noticed because i'm just like every other fucking mouth breathing moron just watching the football season did you notice how there's like no pink in the NFL, like they toned it down over the last three years. They kind of fucking tapered off. Isn't that amazing? And you know why that is, right? Because the NFL raised so much money for cancer awareness. They put such a dent in the disease that they don't even they don't have to do it anymore. That's what happened. That's that has to be what happened, because if that's not what happened, then I guess the NFL doesn't care about finding a cure for cancer anymore. It's, there's no fucking way that's true. It's kind of weird how that happened. Kind of weird how it fucking went all the way the fuck up and then it just kind of tapered the fuck off and people are still getting cancer left and right. That's kind of weird. I thought that that was like, yeah, I thought they were all about the families. Supporting the troops. Charging them for those pictures, right? Supporting the fucking troops and all that. Those fucking cunts, they got in bed with that pink lady. They all got their yachts. People are starting to figure out like, hey, where the fuck is all this money going? You know where it's going. It's going down to the pink twat fucking strip club and all the owners go down and they fucking bang away while their wives are fucking, I don't know, driving around in their pink fucking caddies. They stepped away. The NFL stepped away. They just backed up. They just slowly fucking backed out of the room. 
You know, now they just got a little pink fucking thing on the, on the, this is all my conspiracy theory. They just have a little pink thing on the field. You know, let's say it's uh, maybe 30 paces around next year. It'll be 15. It's just going to gradually disappear. And then maybe one guy in, in October in the NFL will get pink eye and that'll be the last fucking thing. And they'll just, they'll just, they'll just fucking step away. They made their money. They're going to let that lady take the heat. You know what I mean? They're going to play babe in the fucking woods. Oh, we didn't know. We thought it was on the fucking boat, but you know what you were doing. You took all that fucking pink money, you cunts. Um, God, I'd be in such a great mood if I could just fucking. You know what's great is is today the amount of the amount of fucking phone numbers. I got to tell you, having not used the iCloud, and the, and the only fucking number that I knew other than mine was was my wife's. That's it. I knew nobody else's. You know. I'm trying to think if there's even like a commercial on TV. What is that one? Hate, 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 hate. That fucking phone number, the seven sevens at Carmel. I know that one. Um, it's a car service in New York, I believe. I don't know if they're still around. I think they are. Th- those are like the only ones that I fucking knew. Um, but I mean, I got like I got like a fucking. I swear to God, I feel like I got a hundred phone phone numbers back already. Let's go into the old fucking iPhone seven, which for some reason you got to buy this umbilical cord in order to this little mini umbilical cord that's ten bucks. 10 bucks for this little fucking thing that you know you're going to lose. If you're like me, I mean, I, I've probably bought 15 fucking charges for every phone that I have. I always lose them. I always leave them. And, and those things are actually, you know, they're long enough. They're like an emaciated garter snake. I mean, I sh- with a big fucking head. You know what I mean? Like, I shouldn't be losing those. Forget about this little thing. I mean, I don't think it's longer than an inch. So the problem is, is that now with the new ones, I guess when you charge them, you can't listen to your music, which of course... It's just a major problem for everybody, including me. Forget about all these political prisoners around the world. Forget about the children that sew together your flashy fucking clothes. Let's talk about how us in the first world can now not plug our phones and charge them while listening to our music. Okay? I know it's a first world problem, but of course it is. I live in a first world. Um, Jesus fucking Christ. Let me see how many fucking contacts I have already. I put that guy's name in wrong. Gotta fucking fix that one. I've just been obsessed all fucking day long. All day long. Just just everybody who I had I had to take every call. Like once you lose all your contacts, you don't know who the fuck's calling you. It's like, Jesus Christ, I, I gotta call this guy. What if what if what if this is is what if this is the guy calling from the thing? What if something amazing is gonna happen, you know? And it's just the same old bullshit fucking phone calls. Let's see here. All right, done. All right, then you hit this. So the new thing about this one is it's fucking waterproof, which is great. Oh, by the way, if you want to get a, there's a Belkin Lightning 3.5 meter adapter, B-E-L-K-I-N. They're 15 bucks. And if you get one of those, you can charge it and listen to your music at the same time. So they have filled the void, um, the proverbial void created. Um, was it done on purpose when we return? All right, so let's see what I got here. How many fucking phone numbers do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know what? I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to count these fuckers and let you know. All right, I'm back. Quick count. 113 phone call, phone numbers recovered. Recovered and fucking in, let, in, in 24 hours. That ain't bad. I'll get another 100 tomorrow. You know? But there are some that I'm just like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm never going to get that guy's number. You know what I mean? You got to, you know, when you lose all your numbers, there's like, rather than just trying to get to everybody, you got to have hubs. You got to be like, all right, this guy, he, he can give me five. Okay. And that one, one of those five will lead to another five. And the thing is you can only hit each person up for about five numbers. Every once in a while you find a fucking sweetheart, which I did. And she'll give you a zillion of them. My wife gave me a zillion, uh, you know, the woman that I put the Patrice O'Neill benefit together with, she gave me a bunch. And um, I'll just kind of keep going and going and going and going as uh, as we get this thing together. But um, I lost all the photos. And uh, you know what? I think, uh, I think I'm all right with it. Whatever. You know what? I got them up here, man. Got them up here. The greatest hard drive ever, man. Your brain. Um, <laughs> I keep threatening. I keep threatening to get a flip phone again. But I can't because everybody is just, you know. When you run your own fucking business, even if that is shit jokes and everything, and people are sending you emails and you have to sign shit and scan shit, 
at, at some point you got to have one of these. And I also love having all this fucking music on it. I really do. Oh, that's another thing, too. When I plug my new fucking iPhone in, I lost like half my music. How does that happen? I don't know. Is it in, is it in the cloud? Is it on the stars? Where the fuck did all my music go? I had every fucking ACDC album. Now I have like four. Where the fuck did they go? Oh, I know. I'll call somebody up at iTunes and, and I'm sure I'll get them on the phone shortly and they'll they'll help me out with it. Fucking hostile cunt. You can't get to anybody. You know what? This is one of this was must be what it really fucking feels like as you grow older. Is you just feel the world cares less and less about you. You're just like this old horse ready for the glue factory. And then we can't make any money off this guy. This guy can't carry anything. Man, fuck him. And you're just sitting there. Well, why can't I get anybody on the phone? You know, like, you know, what I'm really feeling bad for right now is Hugh Hefner. You know, Hugh Hefner was and always will be the fucking man. All right. And he recently, he had, you know, he had the magazine and, and because of new technologies, nobody's buying magazines anymore. They tried to revamp. They tried to keep up. Blah, 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 blah. Online porn, all this fucking shit. They just couldn't keep up. And uh, he ended up having, I think, having a, I don't know what he had to fucking do. All I know is he put his house up for sale. And part of the sales price was, you know, that he was going to live in the house until he dies. And then you get it and you can do whatever the fuck you want. And I, oh, man, what a fucking, this bit, I got to tell you something, man. I said this to, to, to uh, a near to, I'm going to forget how I said it. I was just talking about Los Angeles. Los Angeles is an extraordinary lonely place to die in. <laughs> Unless, but he does have kids. So I think he'll be all right. Dude, if you fucking just, if you just, if you go out here and you make some money and you get some fucking whores and you get some blow and you take the fucking ride. You know, what goes up comes back down. And when you come fucking back down and you got no cartilage left in your nose, right? And your fucking hair piece is fucking flopping around. I mean, that and then then you're just sitting there and whatever's left of your house that used to be the shit. Now you're sharing it with somebody else, right? And you're sitting there slowly dying, knowing I'm dying. And then knowing in the background, hearing the cars going by, right? And just knowing it's going to keep going without you. They're going to keep making movies. They're going to keep, there's going to be beautiful women and they're not going to fuck you. And it's, it's over. It's over for you. I hope you had a good fucking time, buddy. All right. <laughs> I know it's fucking morbid as shit, but you know, I can't get my, I can't get my phone numbers. it will be fucking hilarious is if you went country to country, what's your biggest fucking problem? And, uh, you know, or like neighborhood to neighborhood, you know what I mean? All this black lives matter shit. And I'm fucking sitting here. I can't get my fucking phone numbers to see. people with diseases there's war-torn countries and i am throwing literally at a 48 year old man having a fucking shit fit because i can't get all these fucking people's and what's funny is is pretty much at this point i have everybody's phone number i got all my friends i got all my family pretty much i got all of that and i got my business context and uh i don't know you know what's the worst thing about losing all your numbers is you lose all those do not answer ones. You know, fucking psycho. Don't pick up, you know, all of those ones. Jesus Christ. And I, I have to pick up. I, I'm, I'm one of those. I got to pick up. I'm like, oh, what if what if this is uh, what if this is Steven Spielberg and he's doing a reboot of E.T. And he, he wants me he wants me to play E.T. He wants me to fucking crouch down and I'd fucking do it, too. I do it. I don't give a shit. You know, you want to stick me in a fucking movie? Okay, go, whatever the fuck you need me to do there, Stevie. You know, <laughs> you want me to sling the mud around as I'm looking at a volcano? Is this some flying saucer playing some fucking music? I will do that in a cell. Oh, that's the lead. I never understood that movie, Close Encounters. I wanted to see it so bad when I was a kid. When I finally saw it, I was just like, that's it. That was the fucking movie. That that really looked hastily put together. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't fuck. Maybe I got to watch it again. Maybe I'm just a football watching fucking moron. But when I watch that movie and Richard Dreyfuss is just sitting there, 
like listening to this, whatever the, like it was like a Simon says, but it was a flying saucer going like beep, boop, boop, beep, beep, beep. And he's going like, wait a minute, man, wait a minute. And he's throwing like fucking mud at this, this volcano. And somehow he gets it. He gets what the fuck's going on. And, uh, I don't even remember the end of the movie. You know what? I don't remember most. Where the fuck do I get off criticizing a movie? Having never made one, right? Like that. Like being the director and the creative force. I never fucking did that shit. And I can't even remember how it ends. That's not going to stop me from criticizing it. I didn't like it. Two freckled thumbs down. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. There's a lot of fucking movies that have done really well that I just don't understand. You know? There's the classics like Chariots of Fire. I don't know who the fuck that was for. But when I sit down... And I saw that movie. I could literally smell the house of the person that liked that movie. Because I had a paper route. And I knew what those kinds of people smelled like. You know what I mean? They just, the heat was going to be on too high. And it was going to have that musty smell of someone beginning to die. You know? You know that? Oh, there is an old person odor. And it's, oh, you ever meet, you ever meet somebody who's like almost your age and they already have it? And you're just looking at them like, do, do they realize they're already dying? It's, I, I don't, it's the smell of decay. You know, how does that happen? I mean, Jesus Christ, that's like a fucking car. If you don't start it up every day, is that, I don't know. Is that what happens? I don't fucking know, but you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not the brightest guy. I mean, I can't even upload my contacts onto my fucking computer, but I know after this podcast, I will be able to, cause I've reached out to you, the common man, the person, the common lady on Twitter. And you know what I love about you guys? I know, you know. You're going to teach me how to do it, but you're going to, you're going to, hey, you stupid freckled fuck, but blah, blah, blah. You're going to give me all, and I don't give a shit. I'm going to fucking, I will glide through those insults to get to this information. I've already wasted a fucking hour of my life trying to figure out how to do this to avoid being in this exact same fucking situation. Um, I was actually, when I was at the, uh, the fucking iCloud store there, whatever, iTunes store, the Apple store, right? I fucking go in there. You know, oh, let's see if one of our geniuses, they literally say it with a straight face. One of these geniuses can figure out, but who's can who? I can't figure out how to do it. So in my world, I guess they are a genius. So this guy was cool as shit. And he goes, did you store anything on the iCloud? And I go, well, not on purpose. I might have clicked something by accident. And we just were just sitting there. He goes, well, click on this. Wait a few seconds. And he's like, uh, no, no, not in there. Well, maybe your photos, maybe save a few photos, click on that. And I'm like, nothing. He goes, no, no, wait a second, wait a second. Just wait a second, see if something comes up. Yep, nothing there. And he goes, how come you don't use the iCloud? And I go, that's, I go, it's fucking creepy to me. And he goes, well, you know, it's a really safe, totally secure system. I go, yeah, until it isn't. He goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to thank everybody who tries to help out me, to help out me, to help me out with this fucking thing. Um, if you're listening to this and uh, you have my phone number, text me. Send me a fucking text, because chances, chances are I don't have your fucking number in my fucking iPhone 7. I'm calling it right now. That little uh, umbilical cord that hangs off that thing, I'm going to have to buy at least nine of those before I buy the next one. This is the first time I've gone from, like, one number to the very next number. Like, I kept the iPhone 4S until I got the 6. Um... I had the three and then the iPhone four came out and then I, I get the every other one. I never had the five. I got the six and I was like, fuck the seven, you know, especially when people are complaining about something new, right? Like this one is so stupid to buy. I would not buy this phone because what's going to happen is they're going to figure out this little appendage fucking thing. They're going to figure it out. And you know what? They already have it figured out. They have the next nine complaints already figured out, and they don't give a fuck. They just put it out like this so everybody can be like, well, it's 99% great, but what about this, right? So, um, you know, I wouldn't buy this one. I would wait for the 7S or possibly the 8. That's what I planned on doing until I uh, was making them mashed potatoes on Let's get to what uh, I wanted to promote here. Oh. Uh, you got your stand-up special trigger coming out. So first it's of all, out. Uh, it's sorry, out. It's, it's out. out. All right. And Friday. When is it? Uh, when is it airing? 
I'm not saying, what I'm saying. I'm saying, where did you shoot it? I Sorry, shot this, it. This no. is where I'm bad as an interviewer. I'm bad too. I'm trying to think of what I'm supposed to ask you. Where uh, did you shoot San it? San Francisco, the Fillmore. I wanted oh, to do you it. Did. Yeah, I wanted to do it at a comedy club. And uh, there was like a debate between Netflix and me. Netflix wanted to do it at a huge place. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do it at a tiny place. Because I did my last one at the Comedy Works in Denver, mm-hmm. which is only like a couple hundred people. Mm-hmm. And I like that. I, I, I think there's something about when you're sitting in a living room and you're sitting on the couch, you're watching a comedy special. It lends itself better to being in a like a club when you're filming it. It feels more intimate. You know, right. you see like you're on top of the crowd. It's, it's more like what it would be, like the environment that it would be. <clears throat> So uh, we made a compromise. We did the Fillmore Theater, which is a fucking really cool theater. Mm -hmm. And it's only 450 seats. It's it's pretty small. It's got a high ceiling, and it's kind of a big stage and everything like that, but it's a fairly small place. That's cool. But next one I'm going to do in a small place, I think. I think I might do at the store next time. You know what's funny is when I went to go do mine at the Tabernacle, you had already been there and did one. So I was like, how am I going to make this different? And I I did the Fillmore in 2009. Let it go I did there. Oh, did you? Yeah. So, great place. So I think we're, we're, we're nice. We're going back. Yeah, we're going back and Where forth. Where are you doing your new one? Yeah. Uh, I did it last Friday. Oh, you did it? Yep. I did it at the Ryman in, uh, in Nashville. Nashville. Dude, I, just, I was just there. I yeah. fucking love that place. That place is crazy. Where they used to do the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. C- uh, Cedric the Entertainer just uh, did one there. So I uh, watched like the opening to his just to see because i was just like because then you got to kind of disguise it so it doesn't look like oh my god he's at the exact same fucking place you know yeah. Cedric's, you know that guy's huge so i i had to make sure i well it's like all right well we gotta try to you know he came in with like a whole marching band and all that which is the exact <laughs> opposite to my style so i was like okay cool cat williams brought a lion he, he brought, brought a lion on stage <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i love that guy that guy's fucking I hilarious love him man too. he's fucking I think hilarious. He's one of the funniest guys alive and you know, and just yeah, having gets, the balls to go on stage with a fucking lion <laughs> is hilarious. How do you come? I want, I wish I was in that fucking pitch meeting. <laughs> like, all right, here's the deal. Here's, what's the concept? I'm coming on stage with a lion, a lion in a cage, like, like a stuffed one. No, no, a real one. He's he got so sweaty during his special. He had to stop and change clothes. I, is that right? Yeah, he literally stopped. He's like, I'll be right back. And went backstage, changed his fucking clothes. He was drenched. I mean, just completely soaked well, with is, sweat. Is if they when they put that HD makeup on, <laughs> and then there's all those lights on you, yeah, and then then you're going hard, yeah, because it's your special, and you really want to make sure you're going to get a good one. And then if the fucking AC is a little messed up. If, yeah. the, if the crowd's all fucking packed in in the wrong venue, yeah, you can get yourself into a situation. I don't wear makeup on those things. I wouldn't wear it for Comedy Central. I don't wear it for the UFC. I don't wear it for anything. Oh. I just like, I don't know. This is what I look like. Yeah, I think it's good. It came, first of all, from Fear Factor. Uh, when I first started doing Fear Factor, they wanted they put like a little anti shine on me, a little of this and a little of that. And after a while, I'm like, look, these fucking people are covered in blood. I mean, right. they've got dirt all over their face, and I'm sitting there with makeup on. You have to touch me up in between scenes. You know how ridiculous that is? Yes. And then we would go from that to uh, the UFC, where people would literally, their faces are getting busted open. They've got giant fucking It's funny, is I never noticed, like, when I watch you on the UFC, I never noticed, like, oh, wow, like, you can... You, he went on TV without makeup. That's so brave. <laughs> that's such a courageous thing. I, you just, you look like you. Well, that's what I look like. You know, I'm just like, I'm not, you know, Mike Goldberg gets it. They spray it on. They got oh, a fucking <laughs> airbrush. <laughs> I'm not kidding. They have an airbrush. They do it to everybody. All the ring girls and everything, they airbrush them. That's oh, what yeah. they do I now. didn't go that far. I, 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 but, dude, my giant forehead, I got to get my some. My giant I gotta, forehead. Nah, dude, I got you beat, dude. Uh, do you? You're, not, know, in the, you're not in the same weight class. Guys. You're not in the same weight class. I sweat like crazy on stage. I sweat like crazy. I mean, my, my last special, I looked at it. When I was doing the editing, I'm like, Jesus, I'm a sweaty fuck. Like, it just looks ridiculous. It looks like I'm, like I'm on drugs. Yeah, but you're up there working. Yeah. I mean, you're not, like, just standing there. So oh, yeah. This one, I, I didn't have any. Uh, this last one, I, I made sure the AC was cranked. Like, with each special, I learned something. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so I was like, make sure the, a- the you know the AC's cranked. Don't fucking cake the makeup on or whatever. Just yeah. so it's just a little bit of that. That's that's, that's all of those stupid little fucking things. You know, don't stick my parents in the front row, please. Stick them <laughs> just beyond, <laughs> beyond the pale, your view. beyond the pale. Yeah, and I I don't show any audience anymore. I decided no more audience shots. I never did. Yeah, it's a, that's the way to go. No audience shots and everything kind of mostly from the waist up, unless you need to see my legs for like a particular thing I'm doing. Yeah. I want to give be a, like Don't I'm give away all your secrets because, oh. because now I feel like uh, 
because there's so many specials coming out, so many fucking specials coming out that, uh, you know, that then it becomes like you, you have to have like whatever your look is. You know what I mean? I mean, the thing about it is you have such a great act that's going to stand on anyways. But if you can add like your own sort of style, the way you shoot them, that becomes part of your thing. That's another way to try to get it out. Because, you know, you get on Netflix with the specials, dude. You just, yeah. you're fucking scrolling, 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 scrolling. Um, I guess so. I just wanted it to be like you're watching it. <clears throat> like, no cutaways. I don't want cutting to the left, cutting to the right, cutting for no reason. Like, like I, there was a director that I worked with once who was like, you know, we'd have to cut to the audience. You know, that's how we're going to do our edits. I go, let's just try to do it with no edits. Just, we, we can't. I go, of course we can. If I do a good show, we could do it with no edits. He's like, no, look, trust me, we're going to do this. I'm like, no, this is my fucking special. Like I don't even know you. Yeah. Like you're you're coming in here and you wanted to do all this stupid shit and and film the crowd and you know the people want to know the people are laughing. I'm like they're gonna hear them laughing. Like right. it takes, in my opinion, it takes you out of it. We, we got to wrap this okay, up, dude. I'm gonna sit up. in like nine million hours of traffic. Joe, you're the fucking best. You've been one of the top comics for what twenty. 25, I don't know how many fucking years since I was in Boston when I saw you at the Kowloon and you did your Tiger's fucking bit, <laughs> which sounds like, oh, it's just Tiger's fucking. Dude, the, the, just the noise you made of the t the Tiger was fucking unbelievable. I still remember your, your bit making fun of the chicks out there with the hair Revere. like a giant root. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was just, you're a fucking monster. So I'm so happy for you that you, uh, you got another sp uh, special that's out on Netflix. It's called Triggered. Please watch it. Uh, if you love it, please rate it. So, uh, you know, it'll stay on the front, whatever that fucking scrolly thing is. And, uh, and that's it, man. Now you're going to hook me up with some elk meat. Fuck yeah. Right? Thanks, Bill. I really appreciate you having me no on. Worries. Man. No worries. And I worries. feel the same way about you, man. You're one of my all time favorites. Ah, uh, we're going to have a big hug after this. Oh, all sweetie. right, guys. Thanks for listening. Dude, do you know when I was in I was in Nashville this past weekend and I was sitting there watching the news during the day and they just go like, um, oh, and folks, if you're in the downtown area and you see the police doing something that seems a little disturbing, uh, don't worry, it's just an exercise. Ooh. And then they continued on and it was just like you didn't do any follow up like or there's no more information. An exercise. What are they practicing for? That whatever they're doing is, is like scary. Now, I'm not saying they're going to come at us. Is it some sort of anti-terrorism thing? I have no fucking idea what it was. But, like, just the the kind of vagueness that they... Dude, right before the Dodgers scored the other day, uh, NPR, my wife listens to that shit, and I, you know... NPR, make, yeah, please NPR. donate. Morning becomes eclectic. If you enjoy NPR. this show, Fresh Air with Terry Gross. Yeah, <laughs> there's always those pauses. <laughs> now, Joe, when you first started doing stand-up... You know what I think of? I've discussed this before, but it's kind of important. You know what I think of when I think of those people? Do you know who that guy John Gomeshi is? I like NPR, but it's just so too. easily to be made fun of. It's it's easy to drive off the road into a fucking tree when you're listening to it, too. You're just <clears throat> oh, yeah. No, there's a lot of... Uh, droning on. But yeah, that, real that style energy. of talk, which nobody does, that really super sensitive left-wing style of talk, the guy that was... Uh, <laughs> he do that really well. The main guy that did that was this guy, Jean Gomeshi, who was on CBC in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it turned out he liked to beat the fuck out of girls when he was having sex with them. He would punch them in the face and club them in the head, and it was crazy shit. And one what? girl what? came out... Yeah. Yeah. One, and he would do it without asking them. It was like, you know, like... you know, That's a, that's a strong move. It's That's crazy. That's a strong move in the rack. Well, I mean, who knows Should who's I telling ask? the truth? Because he was kind of acquitted of a lot of it. It was, it's, it's, because it was, it was very difficult to find. But does he have the him. money to get acquitted? You know. Well, that's true. That's a good point. But he was fired, and there was a gang of girls that came out and said he used to beat them up. Oh wait, 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 Remember wait! That? The, the guy who does the interviews. Yes, he talks guy. like this. Bill Burr, so tell me, Bill, he, how he did you get He bugged me stand? one time when I'm not saying all. Of, I don't know what the fuck he does in his personal life, but uh, Russell Peters was on there. And he just goes like, he's like, Russell, you have nine cars. And Russell's like, yeah. And he goes, why? And it just fucking like making him feel bad because he's doing well. He's, you know, and then Russell had to fucking basically justify it and come up with money. And now I can have it. And I'm sorry. I fucking made it. Wow. And I like cars. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so he's a you know. twat. No, I'm not saying he's a twat. That's just I'm saying, saying just, just right there. Well, even if right he, there, that bugged me. I hate when people fucking do stuff like he that. He had to hit somebody. If you get like eight or nine chicks that are saying you beat the fuck out of them while you're having sex with yeah. them, even if you what get is, off, what, what is, somebody got cracked. What is your number? That innocent until guilty, or how many accusations? Bill Cosby, I gave in around 30. 30? <laughs> 
house. That I heard the first I, couple, but we had heard that, right? I, I tapped you heard out that? around seven. Yeah. No, I, I, there was rumors of his infidelity, but yes. I, I never heard of the uh, drugging. You never heard that? No, I did. I heard that. I had heard that. It was like a rumor. It was a rumor that he would drug women. It was a rumor a long time ago. He was a, there was a court case that is part of this case from, I believe it was like 2005, and that was one of the reasons why they, they weren't allowed to admit that evidence because the judge had made a decision that if he paid this woman off, then it couldn't be admissible in a future trial. But it was all verbal. They didn't get anything on paper. So once they found out wow. they didn't get this on paper, they're like, well, we're going to admit this. And then the woman came out, and then he sued the woman that he gave the money to for drugging her. And the whole thing is very, very sordid. But with Bill Cosby, I think it's up to like 50 or something crazy. Yeah. So you got to wonder, out of those 50, there's probably like 12 that are just crazy. Like, he drugged me too. Yeah. You know, it's- but the fact... <laughs> But the fact that he'd still be over 30 is just nuts. You and I were supposed to go see Bill Cosby in Vegas. We had made like a, we were talking about doing it, but we both flaked and we never wound up doing it. And that's one of my main regrets to this day. I would have liked to see him before the stink hit him. I did. I saw it right before. God. I met him and then three months later I saw him. Do you remember when he was doing shows still? Like all those women were coming out and he was still doing shows. Like he was still doing shows. He was like, fuck it. I'm still doing them. And he went out, and he still did those shows for a little while. I, th- I think he thought he was powerful enough to just sort of ignore it, and then yeah. it wasn't going to, uh, it wasn't going to come around. But dude, I got to tell you, if you gave me a thousand guesses, not a thousand, but if you gave me two hundred guesses, his name would not be on that. Out of all the fuck, of all the fucking people, like if you if you said, okay, this there's a comic out there doing this shit, really, you got your top twenty, where you'd be like, oh yeah, you know what? Well, I, I didn't. I never heard the rumors. I did hear the rumors, and also there was a time. I don't, am I not in the clubhouse? How, how am I, how am I a comedian this long, and I'm not fucking hearing the rumors? I heard it from Hollywood people. I didn't hear it from comics. I heard oh. it from people in the business. I heard it from. Like actors and from people that like work on TV show sets. I heard it during the news radio days. I had heard it. Yeah, he was doing it at the show. He was doing it. Oh, forever. two people that were on the show. <clears throat> two, know, two, two people uh, allegedly. Who the fuck knows? But there's something. It was something unbelievable, un- unbelievably creepy. But after the accusations came out, when he was still doing shows, he would go on stage with one eye looking to the left, one eye looking straight. Remember, he developed a dead eye somewhere along the line, right? So he'd go on stage with that weird eye. They cut him some slack. He's like 90. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, David but, for the grace of God. But he's dying, right? I mean, that's my point. It's like things are falling off the wheels, right? The wheels are falling off the, the ride. And he's got this shirt on, this sweater on that says, hello, friend. And he's, he's on stage, and he walks out there, and, and, and everybody's clapping and cheering. And some guy's yelling out, you're a rapist. You're a rapist. And then, you know, they grab the guy and shuffle him out. And then people are going, we love you, Bill. And he just doesn't even acknowledge He's the like, guy. just ignore them. Just ignore them. Yeah. It was something crazy about that. It was like the last, the last sparks before they threw the water on the fire. It's like there was just a little hope. Like, the oh, gas, we, got, we mean, got some embers. Last spark before they threw the oh, gas, they, you mean? I mean, his career. I mean, his life. They threw water on him. Like, I mean, he's just, it's over. Like, no one's going to go see him live now. Right? I mean, it's kind of over. Um, doesn't water put out the sparks? Yes. That's what I mean. They threw the water on him. They st- wouldn't that mean like they he had, saved he had, him? He had a, no, I mean, like he had a, a moment of, like, there was still some sparks in oh, his career. Oh, 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 okay. I, can, like, I the, get the it. accusations came out, but he was still doing these shows, and people still came out, and they're like, we love you, Bill. <laughs> he's got the you got to explain on. analogies to me. I'm not, I'm, analogy. not, I'm not the brightest guy. It wasn't a good analogy. It was, it was you, your your analogy is probably better. You know, the the, the blowing the f- the flames on the fire. It's like we almost had it out. All right, hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday Monday morning podcast. And I'm just checking in on you. I'm just checking in on your week here. And uh, usually, you know, what do I usually do? I usually sit here in my fucking pajamas. I fucking, you know, give you a little half hour of fucking bullshit to try. What? It's payday, right? You don't need a full show. You're probably half in the bag at a fucking El Torito at this point. If you're listening to it, you shouldn't be driving. But every once in a while, I do have a guest. I do have a guest. And today we have the great Joe Rogan. Hey. Fucking uh, Grand National Champion of Taekwondo, sitcom star, fucking reality show a commentator. Right across the board, elk hunter, wild boar hunter, 
fucking, I don't know what, a fucking conspiracy theory, fucking whatever you want. This guy is his own fucking entity, and he has a brand new killer special on Netflix entitled Triggered. Please welcome Joe Rogan. Thanks, Bill Burr. What's going on? Long time coming, dude. I know. Long time uh, coming. I, I love your show. I have like and you've fuck, been on mine a bunch of times, so it's cool to be on yours. But you're a big like interview guy. I'm I'm like a fucking lunatic who just sits in the corner of his house, and every once in a while my wife walks by. And I love the style that you do because it's very unique. You know, I've done a couple like that where I answer questions and stuff like that, but it's a very unique style of you know. You, I, I think it lends itself really well to stand up and to developing bits too. I just didn't want to deal with having to like book. Like you're fine. You're simple. You're okay. Like, hey, come down to my studio. Perfect. You know what I mean? But like, I just didn't want to. I saw what other people were going through. Like, oh, I got an audition. Can we make Mm -hmm. it four o'clock? And I was just like, I don't want to fucking deal with that stuff. But um, uh, but when I if you know, if everyone could be a guest like yourself, can I start with the elk thing? Yeah, because I am fascinated with hunting. I think it's badass. I think everybody should know how to do it. And and I'm not one of the I am an animal lover, but I'm not going to be that hypocritical one. That fucking eats chickens that had their fucking beaks clipped off and they got the, the roided out Mark McGuire breastplate <laughs> and they're tipping over in the coops, all that shit that you see. And then I'm going to be like, oh, how could you shoot a fucking pheasant or whatever the hell you're shooting out there? But um, you, I retweeted a, a picture of you got this. What is it? You said it was a 12 pointer. How do you say six? Well, and it's six. a six by six. They call it a straight six, six. By six elk. <laughs> it's a six by six. All right, so that means it's a big elk. That was the I've shot three elk. That's the biggest one by far. That one was monstrous. It was huge. So what is the? Uh, this is the thing that always fascinates me about hunting shows, is the nervousness and the whispering before you take the shot. They're always like, okay, there it is. There yeah, it is. just relax. Okay, exhale and just relax. like if you miss. I mean, is the fucking thing going to come running at you? That's no, what the, it seems like because you're it doesn't trying have not a, to spook it because you uh, have to have it close enough for you to shoot it. Depending upon how you're shooting it, if you're shooting it with a bow and arrow, you got to be real close. You got to be inside of sixty yards. Most bow and arrow is badass. I shot one with a bow and arrow. That one out there, the big one, I shot with a rifle. <laughs> Dude, a bow and arrow. Yeah. That's that's to me. That's the shit. I saw Ted Nugent. He shot a fucking bear. You know, which I could never do. I fucking love bears. There's certain animals, but you know what I mean? Bears are interesting. I've, I've, I've shot bears. You shot I, a I bear? I eat bears. I'll f- get you some bear sausage. I can't eat a bear. I've shot three bears with a bear. I can't eat a bear. They're good. And Dude, if you I bet knew you're about delicious. bears. I bet you're delicious. <laughs> you're like a fucking sirloin. Well, we look no, not at even, bears. A, 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 a filet mignon. You got like well, no fat on like you? tender and juicy. Um, That's what I've always felt that about you, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> We think of bears, I think, very incorrectly because the, the, you know what the word uh, anthropomorphization means when you put uh, human characteristics in animals like Yogi Bear and shit like that. Well, you make them ride a bicycle at the yes. circus. We we have this idea that bears are these cute things, but where my friend lives in Alberta, where I hunt, they literally have to shoot them because they don't have any predators. So if bears don't have any predators and they just breed and they keep breeding and then they decimate the moose population, the elk population, and they cannibalize each other. That's the thing that most people. So like, they kind of handle it in house. Sort of, but they eat babies. That's what they do most of the time. What do you mean eat babies? They eat their own babies. The guy has sliders. <laughs> little, little, <laughs> little black bear sliders. <laughs> well, why wouldn't you? Well, it's it's brutal to see. You know, we've we've stumbled across paws and stuff from uh, cubs with the male boars. The, the, that's what the ones. Let me that ask you, you this: you do you, When you just find a baby bear paw <laughs> in the woods, I mean, a part of your soul has to just fucking. It's got to die or cry out. Like I, I, that's something I never want to see. It's very strange. I, I do have to admit, though, that uh, bear hunting's not. I don't like it as much as hunting other animals. If I had to choose, like what animals to hunt, you can eat bear, by the way, and that's the only things that I hunt is what I eat: black bear. Uh, you can eat grizzly bear, but they don't taste good. And most of the reason for that because grizzly bears mostly eat meat. They eat a few berries. If you can find a grizzly bear that was just eating berries, it would probably taste delicious. They literally taste like what they eat. Like hunters try to go after bears that eat berries, like uh, black bears in particular in the fall. They'll eat blueberries. They call them blueberry bears because like as you're opening them up, their fat is like a purple color and it tastes like blueberries. And apparently it's the most delicious meat in the world. So without them realizing they're already marinating themselves. Exactly. You guys are going to show up. They're seasoning themselves. But my all-time favorite animals are elk. That's that's the best. They taste the best. The best for you. And uh, you gave me that that 
elk meat, uh, whatever the last time yeah. I was on here, and I made a chili out of it, and then the, the fucking elk burgers, it's a little dry. Somebody gave me a hint to put a little bit of butter in there to kind of, you know. Yes. Make yeah. it, you needed something like an egg or something to make it stick together a little bit. Yeah, well, you don't want to cook it too much because it's super lean. There's no yeah. fat in it. No, I put a piece of Swiss cheese and some prosciutto on top. Nice. It's fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, you feel good when you eat it too. It's a powerful food. There's a lot of energy in those. It's yeah. like there's there's so much nutrients in elk. It's like way more protein dense, way more nutrient dense. Plus, they're kind of like the, because they're wild. I know, like the, the human like footprint, as they said, you know, acid rain and all the fucking horseshit we do. But at least it's it. I would like to think it's kind of away from the GMOs and all that. It's a way as you can get. So, it's, and who knows what GMOs elk. do to you? But like the fresh shit tastes better, though. It does. Taste it does better. taste better. I mean, GMOs. Everything's G- that's a weird word. Like if you talk to real scientists about GMOs, most of the time when you talk about GMOs, you're talking to hippies and like, yeah, man, you got to stay away from GMOs. Gen- genetically modified. It's giving us cancer. It's terrible for the water. But real GMOs is almost everything we eat. Every tomato you eat is genetically modified. Right. They've all been altered. Corn. Aren't we kind of we're kind of like guinea pigs to see like what what's going to happen. Sort of, but most of it is just splicing. Like I, f- I just found this out recently. You know, they when you buy pistachios, there's a place up in um, Northern California where is they it grow pistachios p- or pistachios. 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 Spend, pretend you're talking to. Sound very regal. When you did that. Thank you. Pistachios. Pistachios. And Joe Rogan mm. eats a pistachio. I like it with tea. <laughs> shelled, of course. I don't shell them myself. Uh, I, I buy shelled pistachios, and I feel like I'm cheating because I just take big handfuls of them and shove them in my fat face. No, you can't do that. Yeah, there's a like reason why there's them. a shell on them because if you if you don't, you're gonna eat a thousand of them. Yeah, I buy them in these big uh, like uh, two pound boxes, and I just pour them in my hands and I eat them. They're good, good for you too. It's kind of guilt free, but you feel like you're cheating. Like you don't have to crack them. I know. Well, I, I I steered you off course. So you were so what they were doing tomatoes. when they grow these pistachios, the pistachio trees, the pistachio bushes are not a big strong tree. So they graft the limbs of the pistachio tree onto like an avocado tree, a thicker, stronger tree, and they grow pistachios on an avocado tree. <laughs> like what the Which fuck? You- but Joe, aren't we playing God at that we point? We are. <laughs> well, we're playing God by driving cars too. We're playing I, uh, God by flying planes. That shit is, uh, like, first of all, I thought pistachios came from the ground. I thought peanuts were in the ground. Peanuts. Uh, I think peanuts are in the ground. Is a pistachio not a I don't nut? No. Wasn't George, was a, Jimmy Carter was a peanut farmer. How did he do it? You should ask him. I think it was in the ground. I don't I know. I don't fucking know. Carrots? That's why I want to hunt. Carrots are in the ground. Yes, that. they are. <laughs> Worms are in the ground. Do you grow any This vegetables? is us trying to recover that we don't know any shit. <laughs> Worms are in the ground. Birds are in the sky. Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... Do I know? I mean, my, 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 the guy who cuts the grass fucking put him on. So I got tomatoes, I got lemons and limes. But oh, all nice. that did was just make me fucking like booze more. Cause I'm just, I get totally got into te- tequila. It's like there's uh, only so much guacamole you can eat. You're just like, <laughs> what the fuck else can I do with this shit? <sighs> um, so I kind of got into tequila. It's less of a hangover. And dude, I'm telling you, you get one of those big square ice cubes. A really nice sticky, just like a Patron Silver. You put that in there, and then you go pick a fucking lime off. I'm mm. telling you, it's why you, it's why I live out here. It's not the show business. <laughs> it's the booze. I got a buddy of mine who just got done running the Bigfoot 200. He ran 204 fucking miles, 205, 205 miles in 78 hours, three days of running, three and a half, three days. No in fucking six, way. Yes, fucking way. Yep, it's called the Bigfoot Two, 200. It's all documented. That's like running 60 to 70 miles a day. Oh yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah. less than that. Fifty, yeah, something like that. Yeah, know. something like that. I'm Whatever it is, numbers. yeah, seventies, twenty-one. I'll say yeah. sixty-three. I'm going yeah. sixty-three miles go. a day. I like what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> three, three is nine. I like it. Eighteen. Yeah, he um, he's run hundreds a couple of times. He actually ran a hundred in June to prepare for the two hundred in uh, August. It's crazy. So, so his half marathon is a, is four marathons basically. He's essentially, a fuck, he's a fucking animal. I mean, he he runs. Uh, does he does he run with those feet? Sneakers? No. We can no. see the toes? No, he's sponsored by Under Armour, so he wears the Under Armour uh, fat tire shoes. It's a nice cushiony shoe. But he's, um, he's, he, he'll run 14, 15 miles a day, every day. Who came up with that? Bigfoot 200, savages, fucking barbarians. His name's Cameron Haynes. He's a professional bow hunter. And uh, to get in shape for bow hunting, because bow hunting is all about like climbing up mountains and shit, especially when you're hunting elk. 
I, I hunt with that guy, and it's fucking exhausting. And I'm in pretty good shape. I'm not in great shape, but I'm in pretty good shape. I could barely keep up with him. I mean, barely. He's barely out of breath, and I'm fucking dying. I'm drenched in sweat, heaving, <laughs> and trying to follow him. Because, like, <laughs> well, you don't want to bring me shape. along for that one, then. <laughs> or anybody else. I mean, the way he does it is a very unique way. He's, like, one of the most successful elk hunters in the world. And one of the reasons is his shape. Because he can get to places. Like, if you see an elk, and the elk goes over the ridge, the key is you got to get to that fucking elk quickly. Because it's moving over that ridge, right? So if, you, if you're looking at an elk, and it goes over the top of a hill and goes to the other side, the quicker you can get to that, the closer it's going to be to that hill. You got to get within sixty yards, and you don't know how how far it's going to move in the time it takes you to get up there. Well, it takes me maybe ten minutes to get up there. It'll take him two minutes. So about those extra eight minutes, that fucking elk's way out of range. You go down the hill after it, it's going to see you. You're never going to get a shot at it. So he has do way you have more any, shot, shot opportunities. Do you have any like uh, re- like uh, the one that got away? sort of shot like you had it you lined it up and whatever you exhaled at the wrong time and you missed it and then it took off that's elk hunting i had five of those two weeks ago there's five of those at least maybe six we we hunted for i shot that one with a rifle because we just couldn't get close enough with a bow after just, five do you feel your guide going like dude are you gonna fucking kill one here is, <laughs> there, is there more pressure no or? that's just how it is elk hunting is hard when you, when, when, when you, when you elk, go when you are you going earn it. when are you gonna go uh, wild boar hunting again I'm going with you. You and I are going to go. We're going to schedule something soon. We'll schedule something. Um, let's schedule something like maybe after Christmas. Yeah, give me an Uzi yeah. and then no, I'll no, go. No. I'm going to get you. Uh, <laughs> yes. Ah! Shows? What's the fucking worst job you had? This um, as far as physically, like, I, I will kill myself before I'm 30 if I fucking do this. Out of high school, I worked on a, uh, uh, there was a Knights of Columbus Hall that was having a wheelchair ramp built. And I had to carry cement bags and pressure-treated lumber every day. Ugh. And I only lasted a little over two weeks, I think. I, think I lasted I- eight days. I was a gopher on a construction site. We were, we were roofing in June or July. Ugh. And I just remember having to bring up those. First of all, I, brought the wrong, I bought the wrong color fucking shingles. They wanted the fucking ebony one. And this was off ebony. I don't know what the fuck it was. So I had to go all the way back unload the fucking things i loaded on load some more back brought the fucking things back i just remember dude it was just like i never ate so much in my life like i'd eat like three sandwiches and like a half hour later i'd be like starving and just weight was just falling (laughs) off of me i was just like dude what the this is insane and but the thing was if i hung in there for like a month i would have got my sea legs but i i just was like no but i i didn't have it i knew it i always knew I always knew, like when I played drums and everything like that, as much every time I thought I was getting good, I'd go into Guitar Center and some eight year old kid would get on a kit and I'd be like, holy fuck. Like, mm. I would, I'd like, dude, I would pay you to give me lessons. And it's just <laughs> like, that when you, when, when, whatever you're trying to do, when you see like a kid come in and he fucking blow, I mean, blows you away, it's just like, it's just like, all right, I, I, this, is, this is a hobby, Bill. This is a hobby. Well, this you, I mean, not working, a, doing construction is definitely not a fucking hobby. It's just brutal backbreaking but a labor. Gift. There's a, there's, it's, there's a gift as far as like seeing how things go to get. Oh yeah, dude. There's an art to everything. Well, there's an and art there's, to construction. There's the Louis for sure. CKs of fucking contractors. Oh God, yeah. yeah, no. I mean, as far as building houses, but I mean laboring, like carrying bags of cement. There's no fucking art to carrying bags of cement. But no, but they they would give me shit to do like you know make this fucking miter cut forty five, oh, yeah. and, and I I fucked the same cut up three times in a <laughs> row. It was to, to frame a door jam, and I kept measuring to the inside of the corner rather than the outside of the corner. Remember the yeah. third time I did it, the, my boss just looked at me, <laughs> grabbed the wood. And he looked at me the whole time, walked up to the frame, and never never took his eyes off me. And the frame was behind him, and he just stuck it to the fucking wall and just stared at me. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I was just like, oh, God, dude. He's uh, like, dude, you, you're going, you went through like fucking $20 worth of stock to make one, one fucking cut. Like, what are you doing here? And I was just like, oh. And I was just, I didn't even pick up my check. You. I didn't even pick up my check. I drove up to the site. I, I we worked Monday through Friday. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I drove up to the site and I just looked at it and my body and everything just said, dude, fuck this. <laughs> and I just kept driving. <laughs> he never called. Why would he call me? I'm of the course. guy wasting lumber. He doesn't give a shit. He got free labor out of me. And I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> and um, I forget what, what I did after that. But that was a rough time for me. But like I always knew like if I, if I didn't like a job and stuff like that, it's like, you, you, it's like the De Niro thing. And uh, what was that? The heat. You got to be willing to walk. 
At any moment, yeah. you got to be willing to fucking walk. You got to know it's bad. Yeah, yeah that well, was it. That was the probably the toughest physical job that I had. And it was also a good, it was a good lesson because it was a lesson that like if you work for somebody else and you're just doing labor, you're just doing just mindless labor, you don't have any time for anything else. You think you got eight hours in a day and there's still another 16, you'll get shit done. Uh uh-uh. You're exhausted. You're oh, fucking yeah. beaten down. I would go to the gym. I'd try to work out. And I remember trying to hit the bag and I just had nothing. There was nothing there. I'd never felt so tired in my life. Yeah. And I was only like 18. I should have been full of piss and vinegar. I was just dead. And I remember, like, all my ambition wheels were just ramping up. I was like, okay, this is not my fucking future. I got to figure out what the fuck I'm doing. Because I, I had these delusions that I was going to become a carpenter. I was like, well, I'll get in the union. I'll start building houses. That's a good gig, which it is, you know, if you're That's a good carpenter. That's what I thought I was going to do. Yeah, you know what? It's a good gig if you're the guy telling the people to go build the fucking house. Yeah. But if you're the guy out there pouring the forms, you've noticed that that's mostly young guys. Guys, like that is a fucking young I mean, even like landscaping like after yeah. a while you got to get a crew and you got to be the guy like sending the crews out because there's only so long that you can just I mean, like I, I feel like like laborers and that they have like the same career trajectory as like a professional athlete somewhere around 35 to 38 your body's gonna be like dude i can't i can't i can't fucking do this anymore you just break down there was uh i, I had a bulging disc in my neck and i went to a, an mri place and uh, there was a lady who went in before me. A this, lady? A lady. And this uh, lady, uh, I was looking at different people's MRIs, and this lady had the most fucking ridiculous cartoon bulge of her disc. Some poor woman who, uh, I think she worked in a laundromat or something like that, just carrying baskets of clothes, and her back was just so fucked up. And she was probably like 40 years old or something like that, came over your hair from... You know, Mexico or Guatemala Jesus. or something. And I remember looking at her back, like in the, like this poor lady has no choice. She has to go to work. There's no way around this, and there's no jobs for her other than this. You know, like what she's she can't speak English. Like she's got to do what the fuck she's got to do. And she Dude, had you went into her chart, huh? You started reading it was right up there. On her. It was just oh. sitting up there on the screen. And I, <laughs> and I asked the guy, I go, "Whose back is that?" And he goes, "It's hers." I go, "Holy shit!" I go, "Does mine look that bad?" He goes, "No." He goes, "That's bad." He goes, "That's bad." It's real bad. Like, she could barely walk. Like, she had sciatica up and down her leg. Oh, I had that. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's what that is. Leg. What sciatica is, a bulging disc. It's yeah. a disc that's pressing against the nerves. You had it, what'd you do about it? I went to uh, masseuse. That helped? Oh, yeah. She, up actually, the area? she worked on, uh, oh, she's a magician, dude. She started with, like, uh, I can't remember who she started with, but when, how it came through me was through my drum teacher. So it was, like, MMA people. Oh, okay. And then, uh, you know, the whole, some drummer or guitarist or something was into MMA, fucked up something, and he said, hey, go to my masseuse. And then she got all the musicians with, like, the, the, uh, what the tendonitis and all that mm-hmm. shit in the forearms. And then uh, it came around to me through my drum teacher. And uh, she, she was like a mate. Like, my left side was fucked up, like the left leg. And she started with my right shoulder because your right shoulder is compensating for your left side yeah Yeah. so she was doing the whole all right let's try to get some information you know see what's going on here and then she'd do something i just go like "Ah!" and she'd be like (laughs) she'd just be like she'd be like okay there's some information all right and then scale of one to ten the pain and dude like um she what she did for me like literally she went so fucking deep it was like these memories come out I remember my brother used to just give me Charlie horses and shit for no fucking reason. You remembered it? Yeah, like, like the it was pa- a store in no, your like, muscle. No, like the pain of it. Like oh. it just pops up. I just I wouldn't be like literally thinking. You just have the thought like, oh, yeah, my brother used to always kick me in the fucking leg there. <laughs> and there was another one. I remember I was playing pickup hockey and I had no stuff. All I had was the fucking uh, the the helmet and the gloves and the skate. I had like sweatpants and like a fucking t shirt or whatever. And I'm out there like an asshole. And I, you know, going down the ice and all of a sudden the other team gets it. So I pop over to fucking start skating backwards. I caught an edge and just went up in the air and just landed on my left ass cheek and fucking that whole side. Dude, I landed so fucking hard. Like I couldn't breathe and my eyes were watering. It's like literally being when you're skating, it's like being thrown out of a moving car, right? So I got up and everyone was laughing. I fucked up my elbow. You know, it's hockey. So you just, oh, I'm fine. You know, I get to the bench and I was fine. And, and a couple of shifts later, it kind of worked itself out. And I had bruised my legs so bad. It was like three days later, I was on the road and I was showering or something. I just saw on the side of my leg, it looked like I had sat in grease or something. And I, then I looked all the way to the back of my leg. It looked like someone took a pipe 
and just had fucking whacked me as hard as you could across the back of my leg. It was this straight fucking line. And I think my sciatic nerve thing was, which is a culmination of all of that shit. And then there was that last thing that did it. So she fucking worked all the way out of that. She gave me all these stretches. And then I found like a good chiropractor and all that. And, um, I've been it's able, all good now. Yeah, I'll do it. I couldn't I'm show you I couldn't, a even, I couldn't even <clears throat> sit down because of uh, my 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 feet would start would start to tingle and stuff. Mm. What numbness is is way worse than that's beyond pain is what I heard. So yeah. the numbness thing is worse. So she goes, all right, we're going to work you from numbness down to pain, and then pain hopefully down to that. And I just I just started going every fucking week. But uh, I got a machine I have to show you. It's called a reverse hyper. And it's a machine that decompresses your back while strengthening it. It's you, you lift weights with it. You lift your legs up, and then it strengthens your back. And then as you lift How do you your legs find down, all this shit. Well, I work for the Ultimate Fighting Championship. I mean, I've been an athlete my whole life. No, but you've been doing life. this shit for every time. I got this fucking chamber right floating. I pay attention to stuff. I mean, that's what I do. I, I, I guess mean, I I've pay been, attention to the wrong shit. I've been doing martial arts since I was a little kid. I mean, maintaining your body is a big part of that. It's one of the most difficult parts of martial arts is not getting injured all the time. You're con because martial arts are all about hurting people. Right. So the, it's practicing hurting each other. So like you have to find good partners. And There's you also always that guy in class that yeah. goes too fucking hard. There's always that. When all that shit came out about Trump, right? He did this, he did that, blah, blah, blah. It was all pretty pedestrian, sort of like, oh, he grabbed my boob and then took me in the back. Just just really generic, sort of like, it's become sort of the cliched story. And then this one woman, so I'm sitting there going like, all right, the Clintons are fucking filthy. Who knows if they paid these people? Who knows what the fuck's going on? It's right before the, just when this is coming out. And so I was going, all right, we'll see, we'll see. And then this finally this woman came on and she goes, uh, so he made advancements at me. And she goes, I, I just pushed him away and said, get real, which is the perfect thing to say, because you're, you're in your 20s. He's like fucking 106. It's like, yeah, right. are you serious? So she goes, I said, get real. And then she said, he thrusted his genitals towards me and, he's, and said, get real. Yeah. <laughs> and she said that and the way she imitated him. I was in the car with my wife. We, I said, he fucking did that one. He did that one. There's no fucking way. That is just too specific. Like, I got the creeps of, like, get real. So I wonder what uh, the logistics are, where the legality is, rather, of the, the audio tape. Like, if you don't know, you're being recorded. Like, you know you're being recorded for a show, you're wearing a microphone, but you don't know you're being recorded while you're on a bus. And you're talking about I, grabbing him by the pussy and all that. He's, he was talking to me. Talking trash. He's talking shit. Yeah, like it, it, like yeah. Joey Diaz would say something like that, and I'd be fucking crying, laughing, and he would be egging it up. He would ramp it up. He would make it way exaggerated because yeah. he knows it's funny. He's going for the laugh. Yeah. yeah. If you're sitting next to Trump and he's like, I just grab him by the pussy, you'd be fucking crying, laughing. That's why it was what, just you Billy too. Bush. I defended him on my podcast. Like. It, like I'm not saying the guy's a great guy, but to fire a fucking guy because of a a, a, a fucking 20 second clip from 11 years ago. What's he supposed to do? He's interviewing the guy, and what you're supposed to do is keep the interviewer happy. Yes, the interviewee happy. So if he's like, hey, grab him by the pussy, hey, grab him by the pussy. Yeah, but he's he just, not even saying anything bad. Billy Bush didn't say anything bad. He just this guy didn't at work, him. This guy at work said, "Well, when he." said to the woman go over and give him a hug he became part of the sexual uh, assault and i was just like what sec there was no sexual assault what they were saying if he actually did it was but the whole thing was just like like this just you know i understand women getting flipping out about it as far as obviously just the whole it would be them but yes. what they don't know is the way guys talk <laughs> when they're not there. Yes. And I'm just, I'm going to say, dude, the fucking shit that we've said. And we, and we say it for fun. Yeah. We don't say it because we really want to go grab someone by the pussy and pick them up like a bowling ball. Yeah, we say it because it's funny. It's funny and you just, you're talking. And it's sh- completely ridiculous yeah. and inappropriate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like but Joe, if, like but, Joey Diaz uh, is a perfect say, example. I will say, if you do have a billion dollars, I, I'm, what I'm learning through Cosby and all these fucking guys is evidently you can do that. And he did say that. <laughs> He's going like, you get famous enough, you can just walk up and grab him by the pussy. And I'm just, that was just so absurd to me. I'm like, you can do that? You can't do that. Well, he's got so much money. You got to think when you get to that billion. I don't think that, that guy could get you six grand in cash if you, you gave him five this, weeks. But I don't I just think that's don't. correct. I think he's leveraged out quite totally. a bit, but I'm pretty sure you go to the ATM and get six grand. But I know you're exaggerating too. Six right. grand's a funny number. It's a funny number. It is funny, right? I'm just saying, right, like, dude. Th- th- there's like liquid rich, right? And your assets are paid off, 
And then there's, oh, I got this, and I'm going to take a loan against this, and then I'm going to do that, get some investors here, and then I'm going to stick my fucking name on it to build my brand. There's that way where you're sort of like steroiding up your, yes. your value. But at the end of the day, it's like, all right, but what? how much can you get me right fucking now? Like, I don't get that whole... Like, well, all my shit's tied up. Right. And I got other guys, you know, I'm, I'm working with. Let like, me see the zeros. What's in your bank account? Show me yes. your phone. Yeah. Yes. Show that me. helicopter, that helicopter with your name on the back, is that paid off? <laughs> is that a sticker? But is you, that a sticker that they take off and then they put fucking Mark Cuban on the back? But that if you're name? a woman showing up at his house and you're having, you're supposed to have a business lunch, you don't know that. You, you show up, he's got this sprawling estate that looks like a castle. He's got these enormous grounds. He's probably got 50 people working just at his house. There's people right. greeting you. They're taking you into these rooms. He comes out in a $10,000 suit. He's got diamonds and Rolexes and everything's beautiful. And you're like, holy shit, yeah. it's Donald Trump. His toupee is like 80 grand. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> doing with his fucking hair why doesn't he go the way you and i did you and i recognized it was over because I, I don't think it was acceptable back then but it's acceptable jordan now. had to make it acceptable jordan made it acceptable but he made it acceptable for black guys for uh, white but guys he transcended no, curly neal of the globe trotters <laughs> made right. it acceptable for black guys that's and right. then jordan was just you know everyone wanted to be like mike Almost Dude, out. you know my last flight uh, sort of caught on fire. What? <laughs> Helicopter flight? No, no, no. Airplane? Air, uh, jet, yeah. <gasps> Flying back from my special in Nashville to L.A. And we got up to cruising altitude. It smelled like burned popcorn. So I was like, did the stewardesses, like, I'll fast forward through this because I already told them, I think. But I was like, did they burn the f a fucking meal or something? And uh, then it sort of went away. Then it kind of came back. And I... I felt this with everybody had the shades pulled down i felt like we were starting to descend and then it felt really like i felt like the wing shaking and shit and i was like oh wow man like there must be some turbulence i thought he was just descending to go underneath it and then go back up again you're like you get a little bit of uh, smoother air here uh, sorry about the bummy ride i thought he was gonna be doing that shit never said a fucking word and then all of a sudden like my drink that was in the little middle armrest started sliding forward like it was going to fall onto the floor. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And then the stewardess came up. She goes, yeah, we're going to be landing here shortly, so I have to take those drinks, right? And then the woman next to me so said... So you landed premature? Oh, yeah. We were only 50 minutes into the flight from Nashville mm -hmm. to L.A. My favorite thing was the woman next to me takes her headphones off. She's like, are we here already? <laughs> <laughs> thought we just fucking... <laughs> thought we were on the Concorde. I was like, no. <clears throat> so what was on fire? I don't know. I don't know what it was. I, I, th I was thinking like, oh, fuck, is it going to be s something in somebody's l in bag, like the luggage or, shit, oh. or some shit, like that value jet, something caught on fire underneath there. And like my whole thing was when we were going down, I wasn't nervous because he had full control of the plane maneuvering it and all that. And I just knew like, yeah, if, the, if you smell smoke, that is a, a uh, the procedure is land immediately. So that's what he's doing. And we're 30,000 feet up. So he's going to land quickly. That's the shaking. That's fine. I feel it's making turns and banks. Everything's working. But my whole thing is, you know, I don't know anything about planes, but I'm just like, if it burns through the wrong wire, if the hydraulics, like, what the fuck's going to happen? So, um, yeah, we came into a landing in Little Rock, and we came in, like, over this river, and I couldn't see the runway. Oh, jeez. Because you can't see straight, so I'm just looking out the side, and I just see this fucking river, and we seem to be following it. That's what I'm thinking, like, is he going to sully this thing and fucking oh, send us into the water? Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> and I was already thinking, and you know what's going to happen? The front part of the plane is going to get fucked up, so that door is not going to open. So I'm going to fucking fight past these first-class people into coach. You know what I mean? Where real people work, so they're going to out-muscle me as they get through that <laughs> I'm going to be fucked. If we use the first class door, I can take out the chick next to me. I'm Half fine. the people are going to be unconscious anyway, just from the stress and the impact. Do you know what was, uh, was hilarious was the, the woman across the alpha was totally freaking out because, unfortunately, her dad, I guess, had died in a plane crash. Oh, so geez. she was totally... Like, like totally fucking hyperventilating to the point it was making me angry, like how fucking freaked out she was. But what kills me is she's, to she's totally freaking out about that. But I swear to God, dude, like 10 minutes earlier, barefoot, walked in, used the bathroom and came back out. Like, like that doesn't scare her. That doesn't scare her, but a fucking a couple of lights on in the cockpit, you know, and the smell of burnt popcorn. Now she's freaking out. Barefoot. What the fuck? Barefoot in the bathroom to women? is is a new thing. I've been flying for twenty years. I've never seen it. It started it with socks, and now it's fu socks are even fucking worse. It's like you absorb, so absorb it. Ah! But whatever happened to women where they decided to wear shoes that hurt? Like what? They always have. But what the fuck is that about? That is such it's a because, bizarre because choice. Because of, of their lack of power, uh, they couldn't get a good job. 
You know what I mean? Believe me, if it was switched the other way, if you made a dollar less an hour, I, I, you, you couldn't imagine the shoes you'd be wearing right now, Joe. A dollar less an hour. <laughs> Do you know that that's not true? Do you know that uh, that whole thing about the, the, the gender disparity, yeah. the wage gap, is not true? Do you know what the, that actually is? It's choices in jobs. It's not job for job. Like, if you were an engineer and you're working next to a woman, she wouldn't be making 70 cents to your dollar. It's uh. bullshit. It's a lie. And it's one of those propaganda things that they like to tout out. And you heard fucking Obama talk about it. Sarah Silverman talked about it when she was trying to get Hillary Clinton elected. It's a, it's a weird thing that people keep repeating, I thought but she it's was not with Bernie true. Sanders. I thought Sarah Silverman was with Hillary Clinton. I thought it was initially Bernie Sanders. And then Maybe she was. Then everybody jumped ship and went yeah. fucking Hillary, including Bernie, who then fucking endorsed Hillary. I was just like, dude, why would yeah, you do that? There right. goes your credibility. You might be right. It might be Bernie she was endorsing. But it's that thing that they say that's just not true. What it is, it's two, it's two factors. One, there's the, la- this, the less hours. Women tend to work less hours. They also tend to take risky. Because they're less- lazy. Well, they just they I'm have joking. kids I'm for joking. the most part. I'm joking. I just, uh, I'm maternity for leave. Laugh. One for the laugh. There's maternity leave. There's a bunch of other factors. They're less crazy, less ambitious. They don't have as much testosterone. Obviously, they're not as, as fucking crazy. Men are be willing to work themselves into the grave. And when they're working side by side, doing the same job, there's almost no disparity at all. There's a few jobs where men get paid more than women, but it's not much. And it's certainly not 70 cents to the dollar. And this is one thing that gets touted out over and over again by people. But it's just not true. Well, I have no idea. Uh, look, I had a friend of mine who I, I got an argument about it. We was talking about divorce, where we were talking about a buddy of ours uh, that got fucked in a divorce. And he goes, hey, maybe it's to make up for the fact that women only make 70 cents an hour. I go, okay, the fact that you say that drives me fucking crazy because you think it's a good point, don't you? And he goes, yeah. I go, do you ever research that? He goes, no, but it's a fact. I go, it's not a fact. I go, it's not a fact. They make 70 cents compared to a guy said a, a, this? Yes, a guy said this. He's a guy who likes to argue. He's a friend of mine who likes to argue. He, he's one oh, of those guys. Oh, he's you, the you worst. Just, you just got Yeah, you got to walk away from that. No, he's a good guy. He's a good guy, but he's got a fucking problem. He doesn't like when he doesn't know something, and when he doesn't know something, he, go, he doesn't go, holy shit, really? He goes, that's not true. And I go, what the fuck? It's true. It's fucking true. Like, go Google it. Like, we got in a big fucking <laughs> crazy argument. Could that be argument. a web series? I want to watch you guys drive from here to San Francisco, ah! just watching you losing your shit. It, it's fucking true. Well, I a couple times we've gotten in these arguments. We've gotten in, like, three of them, and he's, it's uh, like... When I'm not, when I don't know something, I'll say I don't know. Or if someone says something and I didn't know that, I'll go, "Holy shit, is that true?" He's the opposite. He's like, "That's not true." So, oh, if I don't know something, I'll do a bit on it. Twice, twice this fucking guy's done this. <laughs> besides, like I, the, act, act like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but that's I, comedy. I did a bit on the wage gap on my new, uh, no! my new special. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, no, my, is- my old thing was like, how the fuck did they find out what everybody makes? You just call up the IRS. Can we get W twos <laughs> on everybody? They're going to give you that information. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, have, I have no idea. But all I know <clears throat> is that's it, what it it's is. harder for them straight across the board. That is the for thing. For women? Just everything is harder and all of our lives are easier. That's the oh, overall I fucking see. message. I see. You're being sarcastic. I, I am. No, it's just like. You, I, you have one of my favorite jokes of all time What's about uh, motherhood being the hardest job in the world. He goes, how's it the hardest job in the world when you're wearing fucking pajamas all day? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, no job you can do in your pajamas. I love that bit my yeah. wife hates it <laughs> no no i'm not saying it's it's, it's not fucking no but it's funny. difficult yeah it's, it's it's obviously difficult but it's a funny point. i used to do the whole thing yeah, yeah go work on an oil rig that fucking blows up <laughs> exactly and as you jump into the fucking like on fire water going underneath that and then you're just sitting there with second degree burns and salt fucking water hoping that coast guard gets there before the shark eats you alive <laughs> talk to me about you talk to me about the terrible twos <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend of mine who works at an oil rig in Canada, in northern Alberta, where it gets 50 below zero. And I go, well, I go well, how do you do it? Because they work outside. I go, how do you do it? He goes, well, you, you keep the truck running, and you work for about seven to ten minutes at a time, and then you have to go inside the truck for about a half an hour. I go, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, you can't take anymore because any exposed skin you have, it's he done. goes, you try to cover your face up as much as possible. You put a ski mask on, but just your eyes. Just all around your eyes is all fucked up. Like, everything's fucked up. It's like it's just too cold. You just can't do it. 50 below zero. They just work yeah. for short stretches of time. Then they go in the car, and then the other guy will go out while he's in there. And then he'll go out for, like, 10 minutes. <laughs> and then they take a break for another 10, 15 minutes. Then the other the first guy will go back out again. Yeah, all of those shows make me so thankful that I'm a oh. comedian. <laughs> 